Hello again, and what is hip? And welcome to my Nintendo DS collection video. And the DS was a very interesting system for me. I was just coming off the Game Boy Advance SP, and I loved that system so much growing up, and, and especially to this day. And I remember when the DS came out, and I thought it was so cool, uh, but I didn't get one until the DS Lite, and I remember the day I got it. It was a black DS Lite. I still have it. I was looking uh, for it for this video, but I couldn't find it. Um, but it's, it's somewhere around here. And I played that thing until the, <laughs> the hinge fell apart. And I remember we would, uh, my parents were like, oh no, you don't need to get a new, new DS. And so I would grab a popsicle stick and I would stick it into the hinge <laughs> to keep it from falling down. Um, and eventually I did get a new DS. Um, this is my DSi here and this one got a lot of love. I, I played this all the time. Um, I liked it a lot more than the DS Lite. I loved the buttons, the screen. It didn't have the Game Boy Advance port, which really sucked, but I had an Advance SP for that. Um, and the, the eShop or the DSiWare shop was really, really cool. And it had a camera. Um, so that was awesome, my first digital camera. But anyways, let's start off my Nintendo DS collection strong with Pokemon Black. And this is my original childhood copy. Um, I absolutely adored this game. This Pokemon Emerald's my favorite, but this is a close second. And in my opinion, I really think that this was the last perfect Pokemon game. This is the last one that I really got into. After this, I didn't play any of them. Or I did, but I just, I, I, what, I couldn't get into them and then I would quit very shortly after. Uh, the last one I played uh, was Sword, Sword and Shield, and I did play all of that, but it wasn't, it was very, very average. Uh, as you can see in my uh, top five most average video games on my YouTube channel. But um, such a strong Pokemon game. The story was really good, and I hope they remake this. Um, I had Black 2, uh, but then I sold it, and now it's worth a lot of money, and I, I'm kicking myself over selling that. Mario Party DS. This is such a strong entry in the Mario Party series. Um, and you can still get this for pretty cheap. Um, I played this with my friends all of the time. Um, I, I played this in the car, I played this camping, I played this going to the river, I played it everywhere. And it's, it's a pocket-sized Mario Party adventure. And the last one I had played before this um, that was on a handheld was Mario Party Advance on the Game Boy Advance, and that was not very good. Uh, I did not enjoy it. I did beat it, uh, but it was not Mario Party. This is Mario Party. It's really, really good. Highly recommend. Oh boy, Rhythm Heaven. This game, what is there to say about this? It's a rhythm, a bunch of rhythm mini games of uh, similar in vein to uh, maybe WarioWare. Uh, but more rhythm oriented and this was so much fun. I beat this um, Probably within the first couple weeks of me getting it back then and this was a budget title I think it was like 10 20 bucks or something like that and it's just Such a strong game and they came out with one on the Wii which I really want to get but it's around a hundred dollars and I don't know if I can swing that just yet um, but such a good game. I really hope they come out with another one on the Switch. I wish they did on the 3DS, but they never did, uh, at least to my knowledge. But a really good game, and if you can find it, I highly recommend picking this up. Mario Kart DS. Now, I remember fighting with kids in school about the fact that I thought Mario Kart DS was better than Mario Kart Wii, and I still stand by that. I was not a fan of Mario Kart Wii, especially after Double Dash, which I love, but Mario Kart DS, I was a very, very big fan of. And so many courses on here are, are classics to this day. I know uh, the Mario Kart 8 Booster Pass just came out with a couple of uh, these DS, game, DS courses, which is really, really cool. This is also very affordable, and I highly recommend this. New Super Mario Bros. 
the start of a series I don't particularly care for. Now, I did enjoy Mario Kart, or Super, New Super Mario Brothers on the DS. I remember I was in my local Kmart and they had a demo for this and I was like, wow, it's a new 2D Mario game. And it's like a 3D kind of looking thing. I thought that was really cool. And I, I got it and I played through it and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, there really are some standout moments in this game. Now, every one that's come after this, I've not been a fan of, although they did fix it a little bit with New Super Mario Bros. U. I, I did enjoy that one more than Wii, but um, it's a good, it, it is, it's a solid game. It's just very vanilla, in my opinion, uh, which is my biggest uh, pet peeve against this game, but it's still a good game. Final Fantasy IV. Now, this game is what really got me to fall in love with the Final Fantasy series. Um, it, this, I, I fell in love with the music, I fell in love with the gameplay, I fell in love with the characters and the story. Uh, they had a little CG uh, movie uh, that would play every time you started it, and I would watch it on repeat, listening to the orchestrated score in this compressed, tinny DS format. But I, I played this game to the end. Um, I never actually beat it because I, I, I got to a point where I just didn't level up enough and I was in an area where I don't think I could actually leave. Uh, so I just, it was too hard for me. But I remember watching H.C. Bailey do a Let's Play of uh, the Super Nintendo version and I would follow along with that, except on my, on my DS. But this is probably my favorite Final Fantasy game. Um, not necessarily for story, but just for nostalgic reasons. This is, oop, this is the game that got me into the series. Now, Final Fantasy Tactics A2. I've never played it. Um, I, I traded it with my friend many, many years ago, and I lost the cartridge. Such a shame, because um, I really want to play this game. Dragon Quest IX, Sentinels of the Starry Sky. This is a very recent pickup. I got this probably last, a couple months ago. Uh, so I haven't actually played it yet, but I've heard very good things about this multiplayer focused uh, Dragon Quest RPG. Kirby Mass Attack. Uh, this game I have not played much of. I played a couple levels and I just didn't really get into it. Um, the art is really, really wonderful, but I, I just, I, I couldn't get into it. Super Monkey Ball Touch and Roll. This is also a recent pickup. I got it very, very recently. Um, I love this game. This is a, this is a very good port. I know it gets some slack. Uh, people are not the biggest fan of this port, but uh, mainly because of the controls and the D-pad, uh, or using the stylus if you want that 3D analog kind of feel. But I have no problem with it, and I have a lot of fun with it, and it's very cheap. So pick it up if you can. Locke's Quest. Now this is a game that needs to get more, um, it needs to get talked about more. and. As you can see, my cartridge here is completely beat up. It's been through the wash multiple times. I got this game from Hollywood Video for $10 on clearance, I think. And I played this game from start to end. And this, it's such a strong tactical style RPG. It's, it's really, really good. I think they even ported it to an HD system. I can't remember which one, if it was the Switch or the PlayStation 4 or something like that, but it started here and it needs to get talked about more and they need a sequel because the combat was so much fun. Before, I, we'll, we'll go this one. Phantom Hourglass. Um, I love this game. I love it more than Wind Waker. I know. Um, I... There's a character in here, his name is Steinbeck, who you meet right away. 
and I think he is one of the strongest characters in the whole entire series um, in watching his arc and everything with, with Link. And I was not a huge fan of the art style necessarily, uh, but the gameplay was very clever. I did not enjoy using the stylus to move. Um, I still don't, but it's worth putting up for a wonderful game. And it's starting to get up there in price, so I would pick it up sooner rather than later. Zelda Spirit Tracks. Now, this one already is up in price. I think it's like 70-ish dollars. And uh, this one was received better than Phantom Hourglass, if I remember correctly. Uh, more people enjoyed this game. I did not. Um, I, I thought the train aspect was kind of fun, but I just ultimately could not get into this game as much, or the characters, but it's been many, many years since I've played it, so maybe I will head back and give it another try. All right, Kirby Superstar Ultra. That's such a cool cover. Um, this is a very strong compilation of some Kirby games. Um, that's all there is to say, it's still pretty affordable. Uh, if you can find it, definitely pick it up. Final Fantasy 3. Um, I got this after I got Final Fantasy 4 because I fell in love with 4. And I remember getting it and not, I just, I couldn't get into it. The story wasn't as good. Uh, well, there, but that wasn't the main focus. This is a much older game than 4. Um, but I was also young, so this is a game that I do want to go back and try in my older age, my wiser years, uh, because the music really is wonderful. The intro cutscene on here, I would watch over and over and over again. Um, but I, I have full confidence that this is a very, very confident RPG. Now, this is a game that does not get the credit that it deserves, and that's Final Fantasy The Four Heroes of Light. Um, this is, in my opinion, it's almost bravely, the game bravely default before bravely default. Um, the, it kind of started that art style a little bit, as well as some of the gameplay, but this is so cool. It's such a, such a good game. It's very old school. Um, in its design, and it was meant to be, and it's it's a brutally, brutally hard Final Fantasy spinoff. Um, but, you know, I say spinoff loosely because it, it feels like an old-school Final Fantasy game. And this does not get talked about, and it really, really should. So pick this up if you have the chance. Elite Beat Agents. So I got this game after I got Rhythm Heaven. I fell in love with Rhythm Heaven and I found out that this was another kind of rhythm music kind of style of game. Uh, so I was like, I'm gonna give it a try, it's $10. And I'm so glad I did because this was so much fun. Uh, they couldn't get the actual licenses for the music in these games. So they had to do covers of all the uh, popular music. I know um, Earth, Wind and Fire is uh, September is in here, but it's not sung by them, it's, it's a cover, but it's still a very rockin' cover. I, I love this game, I've played it so many times, and I still go back to it occasionally uh, throughout the years. So very, very high recommendation on my list if you want something that's kind of funky, a little fun, and kind of out there. Pokemon Diamond. I was very excited when this was announced back in the day. I remember the day I got it. I think, it, oddly enough, it was from a Verizon wireless store. Um, I remember being excited that it's on the DS, it's going to be this new 3D kind of style, it's going to be so cool, and I remember getting it, and I remember being disappointed. <laughs> and this is when I was younger, I was probably 14, 14, maybe a little younger by the time this came out, I probably was younger, 12, 10 to 12. Um, it's, it's my least favorite in the series after, I guess, Sword and Shield now. Um, but, I mean, the story was, it was okay, it was just an okay game, it didn't do much for me. There are really, there are some standout moments, the music is, is really, really good. Um, and I do like the character designs, Dawn, 
the, 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 the girl and I think Professor Rowan is his name. Uh, I like this design, but yeah, they came out with the HD remake and that one's not good at all. So I would stick with the original DS if you can. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time. Now, Pokemon Fire Red Rescue Team on the Game Boy Advance was one of my most played Game Boy games of all time. I fell in love with that game. I, I mean, I nearly 100%ed it. I was very into it. And so I remember when they announced Explorers of Time and they're adding time stuff. I was like, that's really cool. Uh, so I picked it up and I love this one too. Uh, this, in my opinion, is also the last good mystery dungeon uh, game in the series. And it's the, I think the other one was Explorers of, I can't remember. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's very good, a very, very good game. And it expands upon the original Red Rescue Team. I still like Red Rescue Team a little more, but that just might, that might be nostalgia talking. Um, but this is a very solid game. Pick it up if you have the chance. And the last one we got on our list here is Radiant Historia. And this edition used to be a very, very expensive little thing. I got this the day it came out uh, from my local game store at the time, uh, Game Trader. And it comes with the game and the soundtrack here, which I have not opened. <laughs> um, but Radiant Historia, yeah, it used to be a very, very expensive game, but since they did the 3DS re-release, it's not quite as much, but this uh, box edition, I think, still goes for a little bit. Um, it's a very good RPG, and I'm ashamed to say I have not beat it. Um, I haven't gotten too far in it either, and I got, I got 10, 15 hours into it, and then I just stopped playing. Um, but I remember really, really enjoying uh, what I had played, but it's an Atlas RPG with time traveling elements and it's it's very good uh, if you can find it i'd pick it up sooner rather than later because i know the ds and the 3ds ones are going to keep going up in price the 3ds one i think has already surpassed the original ds one uh, so if you can find this is a good price pick it up sooner rather than later but there you have it there's my ds collection it's not the biggest it's much smaller than my 3ds collection i was uh when the DS came out and everything, I was not as into it as I was with the Game Boy Advance. Uh, it's probably my least enjoyed Nintendo handheld. Um, but then the 3DS came out and that changed everything. I love that system. Uh, but I really should go back and explore what the DS has to offer because the DS has hundreds upon hundreds of really, really wonderful games that were only released on it. Uh, so I encourage you all to delve deeper into the DS games, uh, as well as myself, uh, because there's a lot that I, have not, that I have yet to explore on this system. But what are some of your guys' favorite DS games? Is the DS your favorite Nintendo handheld? Is it not your favorite like mine? Uh, let me know in the comments, but thank you so much guys 